Well, good morning, everybody. It is a very, very early 3 a.m., and we are northbound on I-17 out of Phoenix. So, if you saw the last video, then... Well, only one word can describe what I got. Rubicon. taking my Jeep on its very first photographic expedition. So this is a short one up north. We're going to try and take a picture of a comet this morning. So yeah, it's early. Let's do this. picture of I think it's comet ne Neowise or something like that anyhow this comet uh, this is supposed to be one of the last good mornings that you're going to be able to see it it rises about 80 minutes before sunrise and this is summer so that means this is really really early in the morning so normally I don't get to do this but then again normally I don't have a Jeep to take me to where I'm gonna go so a few days ago my wife and I we drove out to this spot we're gonna head up about 3,000 feet so we'll be around uh, 4,000 feet in altitude and it looked like a pretty good spot we had a great view of the uh, north and eastern horizons which is something that you need for this comet and since it rises so close to sunrise you don't get a lot of dark sky time with it that's why we got to make sure we head out there and we're going to be there i th think probably right before the sky starts to get any color in it so hopefully we'll be able to see it now the other problem is is i did see some stars but i think there might be a thin layer of clouds this morning which is not going to serve us very well when you're trying to hunt for a comet uh, and also the other thing since we are going up into the mountains there's a higher chance of actual clouds so a bit of a risk this morning as we go out and try and photograph my first comet now this is not my first comet my parents bought me a telescope when uh, Halley's Comet came around the last time and I'm not quite certain that I actually saw it in 1997 I think um, traveling back from Ohio a buddy of mine we thought we were seeing the northern lights and then all of a sudden we, we realized we were seeing I think it was Comet Hell Bop at this time and it was an amazing thing to see with the naked eye so to kind of help us out I've got my grandfather's binoculars yes they still work and they're still in great shape I've got his binoculars in the uh, back of the Jeep right now and with binoculars because the uh, lenses are much bigger than your pupils second here since they're much bigger than your pupils they gather more light and they do make it easier for you to spot objects in the sky so hopefully that's going to help us out i'm not too confident right now because i'm not seeing a whole lot of stars as we head north here but we'll see let's do it you can't turn the tide let the water go where it wants to go Okay, so we're out here at the site. Uh, absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful evening. There's a slight glow to the south from Phoenix and also a little bit of a blue glow to the east because of course we're getting close to twilight now. Uh, it's four in the morning and I can see the galaxy above me. So the red light you're seeing right now, um, your eyes will keep their night vision if you use a red light. So sorry if it's <laughs> a little kind of awkward looking at me in all in red light, but 
that's what we need to keep my night vision. I can see the galaxy overhead, so we're definitely going to be pulling out the camera, getting some astrophotography in. Let me take a breath. Let me be a part of something real. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm doing this. I'm focusing on the moon. Just make sure I got binoculars in focus. Venus. Huh. Not had much luck here. You know, for a first magnitude comet, it's not easy to find. And you are definitely getting twilight is happening, so I'm going to start losing my opportunity here. And sorry I'm keeping my back turned to you, but I'm trying to keep the glare of the light out of my eyes so I can maybe see this thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up a long exposure across the sky, see if we can use the camera to find it. The sky is definitely getting light. We don't have much time here. Now if I can just get the tripod to the level, that would help too. Alright, so focusing, autofocus is not going to work too well, so focused on the moon. Let's try this again. Low on the horizon. Let's see what happens. Alright, so we're doing a 30 second exposure right now. In the northwest, we're going to see if we can find the comet by using the camera and a long exposure. That's going to really light up the stars. This first image actually has the comet in it, but I took it at an extremely high ISO. So the comet is actually hidden inside the grain, so I never knew it was there until I looked at this image in Lightroom. All right, let's see here. Got another image. Yeah, aside for some aircraft, I don't really see. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's that? What's that? No, I don't think that's it. Here the comet is actually in view, but the problem is, is I've got my exposure too high with the twilight and the glare of the sun is actually blocking out my view of the comet. But, as sometimes we see out here in the desert, here's a couple of UFOs. Amazing thing, I had my ISO way too high, turn it down, we found the comet. And so here it is my first image ever of a comet. Okay, so I'm doing right now, I can't see with the naked eye, but I had it, yes, there it is. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna keep my eyes so high Using what landmarks I can see, we're going to slowly zoom in on this comet. Oh yeah, we got it. Definitely. There is a, um, a uh, we call it, radio tower out there. I'm using it as a guide. The comet's very close to it, so probably have to clone that out of any images. Over these next few exposures, I tried to zoom in on this comet that was invisible to the naked eye. Unfortunately, as you zoom in, you need longer exposures. The longer the exposure, the more the sky moves, and also the more light from the sun casts glare into the sky. Eventually, I zoomed back out just a little so I can try and get a little sharper image of the comet. So as the comet disappeared into the morning glare, I decided to stay out here and just do a little extra landscape photography.
what that is. There they are, coyotes. Yeah, you got coyotes out here. So we're just going to wait to see if we get any color on the mountains here. One thing, one mod modification I think I'm going to do to the Jeep is right back here, replace this with a fold down uh, countertop, so to speak. And uh, that way I can pop my coffee right there, maybe even get a, uh, a uh, propane grill to put on the back of this thing so I can uh, cook a little bit while I'm out here enjoying the wilderness but right now it's coffee break time mm. can you believe I actually put a, a cup holder there it's awesome Normally, I shoot towards the sun, which is now peaking above the horizon. But instead, we're going to aim over here at the Bradshaw Mountains, try and capture some of that alpine glow. It's really hazy right now. We've had a lot of wildfires so far this year, so I think there's a lot of smoke around here. But we'll see. Let's see if we can get any color on the side of this mountain. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I really want to thank my supporters on Patreon.com. If you would like to check out the bonus material that I have for my patrons, check out Patreon.com forward slash EWJ. I'm going to wrap things up here, go get some breakfast, and I'll see all of you in the next episode.